of water saturation increasing in steps. I hope I have answered your question. Uh, let's move to the second one. Janice Jacob, what is the most suitable polymer for flooding in crude oil extraction? Uh, well, uh, Jacob, Mr. Jacob, you know, it is usually normal hydrolyzed polyacrylamide, HPAM we call it, is used uh, most uh, widely in oil fields, whether it is medium gravity or very heavy oils. But sometimes uh, polysaccharides are also being used, but very rarely. They are very expensive ones. Usually it is hydrolyzed polyacrylamides which are used in oil fields. Naeem Akhtar says, could you explain the trapped gas saturations concerning water flooding? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Akhtar, actually, if you are maintaining a very good water flood at the bubble point, when do you start water flooding, actually, you know, at either at the bubble point to maintain the pressure at the bubble point so as not to develop any gas saturation inside the pore spaces? Well, with exploitation in the reservoirs, there are to some extent some gas saturations. But if you want to maintain the health of the reservoir in a good way, then you have to ensure a good water flood, maintenance of reservoir pressure above bubble point or close to bubble point, and to ensure no gas saturation inside the pores. Now, when pressure depletes significantly, when pressure depletes significantly due to a very poor water flood, well, you will have significant gas saturation in the, the pores. If gas saturation comes up in the pores, means it's going to hamper your productivity, oil productivity, because of relative permeability concepts. Because if gas saturation goes on increasing, your KRG is going to increase and KR liquid is going to go down. So, a a good maintenance of reservoir health is the necessity and gas saturation should be avoided inside the pores unless something unusual happens inside the reservoir. Pius Daha says, are you aware of any UR techniques that have been successfully implemented in unconventional shale and tights? And yes, uh, Pius, excellent question and I am trying hard. Uh, during my last stage in uh, my professional career to develop carbon dioxide injection in tight sands and you can call it shale even, you know, because uh, very tight reservoirs are very close to being shaly and very tight, low permeability ones. So I believe this tremendous potential of carbon dioxide injection, you know, if you see the U.S. Uh, tight reservoirs of Texas, yes, carbon dioxide injection has been resorted to. And uh, I'm very confident here too in India in the coming days, you will see a tremendous uh, boost of carbon dioxide injection because what other UR agents cannot do, I believe carbon dioxide can do in terms of attaining miscibility and, you know, being a gas, well, you can have more injectivity than water. So certainly two of the purpose you are going to solve and you can significantly add reserves in tight reservoirs. So I believe there is tremendous potential for you, uh, carbon dioxide injection in shale and tight sands. Alfi Shankan Behalim asks, what is the future of UR in India? Is it low price affect UR? The future of EUR in India, yes, government, you can see yourself only the government policy on EUR. That means trying to promote, to think on EUR. All operators should think on EUR. What application of EUR should be implemented in all the fields that has uh, on production in India. So everybody is trying to promote EUR. And I believe in OHC, significant amount, almost around, uh, see, world, 3% of the global production is coming from EUR. And almost the same percentage is coming from ONGC to 3 to 5%. But if you see the Western sector of ONGC, it is around 25%. It's a big number. Huh? So that means uh, the, 
I, I call Gujarat as the Texas of India, in fact. Why? Because in Gujarat, you see all the UR processes being implemented, whether it be it the air injection, miscible hydrocarbon, polymer, alkali surfactant polymer, and maybe very soon you will see a miscible carbon dioxide. I think, yes, oper necessity is the mother of invention. I believe when there is a necessity like that in KN, you can see in Mangala field, polymer is going on in a commercial scale. And that too, right at the late stage of primary, the pri uh, polymer has been uh, started. What for? Just to boost up recovery. There is no other way. So you have to consider, you know, these processes in its life cycle, without which you cannot survive into the field. Yes, certainly, you know, there is two school of thoughts. Uh, prices almost always affect you are in the world. Some operators close their doors. Some operators shut the R&D. You know, some stop thinking of EUR. Some even stop drilling wells even in the low price. You have seen that. But there are operators, there are national companies who utilizes this low price regime to develop self-reliance in EUR. I cannot tell you due to confidentiality, I'm working on a South American uh, EUR project in a national oil company, what for they're doing in a low price oil regime just to develop self-reliance and be confident when the oil price starts, they can develop in a commercial field-wide scale. And so is in India too. I don't think polymer has been stopped in Ken because of low oil price regime. Not just air injection in Santal has been stopped due to low oil price regime. No, it's still going on. So it all depends on the company perspective. NOC perspective will be different. International oil company perspective may be different or the service oil company perspectives will be different. So it's a business, oil business. So it's up to you. So next question. Dharti Patel. Future of you are not just in India, also around the world. Well, uh, there is a tremendous future. In fact, uh, all the oil reservoirs today or tomorrow are being subjected to these processes. You know, some, I believe now being a reservoir engineer and at the late stage of my professional life, I realized that it is you should think of you are right at the beginning. It benefits the reservoir. It benefits the company. It benefits the nation. You know, you are is the building block. It is the foundation of a nation. Well, uh, we 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 at this moment are having 26 percent production of our requirement of our demand. We have to import 74 percent. So why not? You boost up the production, your production. So try to promote it. So I believe there is tremendous future and the same way different countries are thinking. I again tell you the NOC perspective may be different. The IOC perspective will be different and the service oil company perspective will be different. So you, you may not be able to see there can be a tremendous mismatch between all these three concepts. But I belong to the school wherein I believe that, yes, you should start thinking of you are at the very early stage and there is tremendous future around the world. Shakti Vive, can we create UR at an optimal price so that straight away go for UR? Absolutely, I agree with you, Shakti Vive. I, 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 I promote your cause. That's why I said, unfortunately, my apologies for this presentation in the slides. They have not been linked to my talk. Actually, the first slide after the introductory one was the definition of you are. I disagree with the definition given in the books in the tertiary stage that you are will know you are can walk into the primary stage and I have done it in Colombia in the primary stage steam injection. What for? To to earn money. You know, finally you are to create business, you know, to produce oil and to generate revenue and to earn profit, to pay back to the shareholders, and that's what. So 
should you think that I should delay a process 10 years, 15 years, what for? Entire revenue returns get delayed. Why not? To walk in with that process right on the first day. So I agree with you. Like skiing, walking into the prime minister stage in the heavy oil reservoirs, in the fiscal, in the fraction and flow, as we have seen. Why to wait with more water at the primary stage in the viscous oil reservoirs? Start with steam or air or with polymer, whatever you think correct for the condition of the reservoir. So that is where you have to think ahead. Hope I have answered your question, Shakti, and I agree with you totally. If 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 I am given the responsibility, I will start implementing thermal, particularly right in the primary stage, polymer slightly late in the primary stage. Primary stage doesn't mean on the first day of the life of the field. It can be after a recovery of two to three percent of the in-place oil. That gives you a fair idea of the fluid flow inside the reservoir. So you need to know before you embark on an UR process how the fluid is flowing into the reservoirs, where the water is coming from, where are the high permeability channels and all those things. Dharti Patel asked again so that we can get an optimal production in limited time. No, we get maximum production in limited time. Why optimal? I want the peak of the oil production right at the close of the primary. So that's what it is. Amir Mehman asked, how far are we from extracting carbon negative oil? Well, that's our attempt to make it solar. Even steam injection in Oman is solar. EUR is going on because to get rid of the carbon which gets generated in generating steam. So that is our attempt here too in India too, you know, as much as possible to make it carbon negative. But that's a big challenge. Huh? That's a very big challenge. Even uh, like the carbon dioxide project, which we are aiming at in the western sector of Gujarat, uh, maybe in the coming five years, you will see the first CCUS project, carbon capture, utilization, storage project. That gives two benefits. One, it adds reserves to the extent of 10 to 15 percent over the water flood. And second, you sequester the carbon dioxide, which otherwise gets emitted into the atmosphere. Himanshu Panchal is Bhopehai, which UR method is suitable. That's a carbonate reservoir. It has very high salinity of 30,000 ppm and divalent ions are present. So chemicals cannot work, very difficult to work. The current, current brand of chemicals like polymer or and very high reservoir temperature of 120 degrees centigrade poses a serious challenge, you know. So the bright water flood or the smarter water flood appears to be the best way to increase recovery. Sachin Nambiar, sir, if you throw some light in addition recovery expected from what is WISR project Mumbai High Asset? What is that? With what is that? I, I I don't know what is that. Is it that uh, um, that uh, low sal water flood are you talking of? Uh, Dharti, can you just ask Mr. Sachin Nambir what he means by WISR project of Mumbai High? I only I know of a low salinity uh, project, the pilot of which I did it in 2017 by injecting a very low saline water in a 30,000 ppm saline environment and getting uh, benefit in terms of oil production. I, I like to seek or you can email me what is that WISR project in full. I can answer you in total. Anirudh Burdhan asked me how one can choose what kind of gas to re-inject. Ah, well, carbon dioxide or natural gas. Yeah, well, uh, it's a it's a business business proposition. You know, 1992, 1994, you know, entire western sector was under development. That time, Gandhar field was discovered, 1985, volatile oil, and it wanted to inject gas for miscibility, miscible gas injection. You know, so 
at that instant, very few industries in and around of Gujarat were there, in and around Gandhar. So obviously, carbon tax at that time was taken account of availability and it was not available in that sufficient quantity. So obvious choice came down to hydrocarbon gas. Now, hydrocarbon gas, there can be two options. Well, C3, C4 extraction, that's the LPG plant came out and then only the lean gas was supplied. Why to waste the C3, C4 in injecting into the reservoir, a rich gas? Gandhar has a very rich gas. So C3, C4 plant was created, you know, in Hazira and in that around area, and the lean gas was supplied, and which was luckily within the miscibility pressure with that composition of gas and oil. And so the first miscible lean gas hydrocarbon gas injection UR project started in Gandhar in 1995 and recovery factor has been boosted up from around 25% to around 52 or 53% and still going strong. So that's the benefit of a hydrocarbon gas injection. But now, after so many years, that same Gandhar field is in a highly matured stage. Recovery factor has gone to 40%. What next? Obviously, to get an answer to what next is a very big challenge. So now, by this time, the industry is in and around has come up. The, the refineries are supplying CO2, the NTPC plant having enough CO2. So now, CO2 will be taken from one of the suppliers, industry partners, and injected into this field to get that additional benefit as well as carbon capture utilization storage project. Hope I have answered you, Anirudh. Darsha says, can we achieve this Atmanivar concept in your? Oh, of course, and that's what my aim is. Uh, to be Atman River. I have been all around. I grew up as a petroleum engineer like you in 1981 under the umbrella of some several Soviet experts, American experts, Romanian, Hungarian, blah, blah, blah. But now I believe, yes, at a situation like this, you know, the Guru Shishya Parampara thing has to be passed on, you know. To be Atman Nirbhar, you have to pass on the legacy. Like it has been passed on to me, I pass it on to my younger peers and subordinates. So this way the thing goes on and we become Atma Nirvar and self-reliance. Today I'm proud to say, at least in ONGC, we are self-reliant in this area of EUR. Well, you know, you have to be in touch with, with technology, with changing technology all across the globe, you know. Why then? If I, if it is not Atmanirbhar or self reliance, why I should go and help out other countries in the world? So that is that also shows that yes, something on that aspect we have been able to gather. Kushal Das, which is better either to invest money or for more exploration purpose for or for more exploitation purpose? Actually, for your purpose, uh, where to invest? You are itself is an investment. You know, you know, creating a laboratory, creating a human resource, thinking of EUR is, is an investment. So think of it. It's a chain. I, I, I unfortunately that slide has been missed out in my presentation due to some reason. The amount of efforts and risk in and the investment which has to be made in five to 10 years period in order to reduce the risk and uncertainties. I, I'm, my apologies for not showing you that slide. If you write to me my email, I can send you that slide again. But that's a very important slide, you know. With time, that's the investment we are making, efforts and investment, both. You have to make effort and investment to reduce the uncertainty and risk, to translate your concept from the mind to the desktop, to the pilot testing in the field, to the commercial field, why? So it's a big investment. Of course, that's what you should think of. 
I, I Sachin Nambia says thirty petal water injection south. I don't know. Oh, water injection south. That, that they are all going on in Mumbai high north and south, and that is the mainstay of Mumbai high water injection. It's extremely challenging. We tried immiscible wag in 2000. We could not do justice. I immiscible condition because the reservoir pressure, you know, is very low there. And miscibility pressure was around 150 and 60, well beyond. So that means we had to rely on immiscible hydrocarbon wag. It didn't work. So water injection looks to be the most promising one and to increase recovery factor to 35. You see now how to increase the recovery factor. Recovery factor is a product of displacement efficiency and volumetric sweep efficiency. So that means if displacement efficiency of water you know, that means you have to now tweak the contact volume of the water either by reorienting the water injection or by some gel treatment in the injectors, profile modification. So you have to increase the contact volume of the water, shifting the line of injectors. So this way, you know, you increase the volumetric sweep efficiency. And so the recovery factor changes. And that's a low saline flooding, which I started, in fact, the concept and uh, tested in somewhere uh, WU area. I remember, I don't know, in Mumbai, I not a south area or north in 2017 but that showed a very encouraging results and it must it is in a project form now and it's going to be implemented that's the only hope for mobile eye you know i tell you one thing bp had started clear ridge had a sanctioned project of low saline water flood in sandstone offshore Gawar in Middle East is onshore. And now Mumbai High will be the first to have carbonate offshore, low saline water flood. You know, low saline water flood recovery factor is not that big, you know, maybe two to three percent additional. But for giant size of Mumbai High, two, three percent is a big enough. That's the UR. That's the benefit of UR. 1% increase means you will add significant amount of reserves. Olive Shankan Behlim like to know some brief of ask you or oh well you can write to me. We are all three technologists. We are not uh, you know we are we we value knowledge. Ask you or values knowledge not position. So all three in respective specialists in respective three areas have come together to be a part of Atma Nirvar India. I hope I've answered your question, Mr. Bahali. How you see you are create employment in India? And that's what I said, you know, you are is the building block and the foundation of a nation. Of course, it will create more uh, job opportunities, more, you know, researchers, more researchers and more uh, job opportunities for in all engineering and uh, geosciences. Subham Nalawar is CO2 flooding a potential of in? Oh, yeah, I, I believe so. Uh, since my last couple of years, we had been working on carbon dioxide in many, many fields of South India and in Western sector. We found to be all amenable to carbon dioxide miscible. Now the question lies, where do you like to get the CO2 from? You know, to do CO2, you are your source and the sink has to be close to each other to cut down on the cost. CO2 transportation is the costliest, is the most expensive thing. So you cannot afford to think of a UR project which can be 50 kilometers far off. As close as possible, the, uh, the source and the sink of CO2 UR. Any more questions? I think, uh, did I answer all the any more questions, please? Uh, hello, sir. I have a question yeah. from my side. Uh, this is Dharti here. Yeah. My question is that how can in situ combustion be carried out uh, on, um, you know, light on reservoirs? Okay. Now, if you if you if you track down, if you recollect, 
the oxidation curve of air injection i call it in situ combustion as air injection and i dirty i i request you to change this terminology to air injection from in situ combustion hope you will agree with me now if you react if you see the oxidation curve of air injection in heavy oil you know you get a very small peak in the first and the second high peak in the second the first peak is the zone of pyrolysis where the oxygen gets embedded in the molecule of hydrocarbons and it some you know it creates some amount of heat not so much and not enough of co2 is liberated in that regime where the temperature can go up to 250 to 300 that's the zone of pyrolysis and from there the reaction goes into a valley and goes slowly goes into the higher peak this peak is the high temperature oxidation the small peak is called the low temperature oxidation and this high peak is called the hto in the hto what is happening bond season reaction jaisa kaichi kaatta hai chain ko hydrocarbon ka waisa oxygen breaks the molecule of hydrocarbon and tremendous amount of heat is liberated 500 to 600 degrees centigrade in a heavy oil so and tremendous amount of co2 stoichiometrically around 15% of co2 is liberated so you see the difference now between the low temperature oxidation and high temperature oxidation in a heavy oil in a light oil it is just the reverse first the higher peak of around 300 degrees centigrade not much because fuel content in light oil is less and then all the fuel is run out and so it's a small peak at the end so this is the basic difference between the oxidation curve of air injection in a light oil and a heavy oil so if i rely mostly on if reservoir temperature is high well go for air injection in light oil too It means temperature must be more than 70 degrees centigrade if reservoir temperature is high pressure is high so obviously the reaction rate of oxygen will be high because partial pressure of oxygen will be high with a higher pressure and with higher temperature the reaction rate will be higher and it's very safe to have air injection project in high reservoir temperatures because oxygen bypass will not be allowed because oxygen will get embedded in the uh, in the fuel and you won't see any oxygen break through into the oil producers that's a very safe the the project in colombia we are doing it's around uh, 200 degree fahrenheit is a very high temperature reservoir it's around 93 degree centigrade i love hot reservoirs in my hot reservoirs with air you know you have zero chance of oxygen breaking through into the producers hope i answered your question dati any more Uh, yes, sir. We have some more questions uh, in the chat box. Please. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Uh, Doctor Professor Uttam Bhui, how are you, sir? How to create more you are working professionals for the benefit? Yes, this is a very interesting question. I think you need to create more like me. Hope I have answered your question, Professor Bhui. you know you have to have confidence in these youngsters and develop interest in them you know embed in their mind something of very simple way you are don't confuse these youngsters with very complicated enhanced oil recovery terms and terminologies explain them in an analog fashion in a very simple way develop that interest trigger their mind and i believe you will create tremendous amount and seeing is believing i believe you know if they see the beauty of displacement process you know i i guarantee you they will love for you they will fall for you or and you will create a huge bunch of you are enthusiast in the young gen and i am confident this young gen can do miracles actually in the field of you are because in the recent past you know although i have not been interacting with many of you uh, but i i when i hear some oh they know a lot maybe i don't know so much 
after working 38 years. But these young gen, I'm very confident they will come across. But show them, make them see. Seeing is believing. Laboratory is a very important tool to create this young gen. Actually, I am unfortunately, I'm seeing in some cases, uh, these young budding petroleum engineers are not able to visualize, not able to see their reality. How a displacement, port to port displacement looks like. How oil is pushed by water. How oil is pushed by gases. How pushed oil is pushed by polymers. If you can see them in a very simple way, I believe Professor Bui, they, they will, they will, you will be able to create a huge bunch of working professionals for the benefit of all the country. Is there any constraint in CO2 capture technology? It's a very complicated question. I'm not a specialist in CO2 capture. You know, there are companies, Mitsubishi, and there is another UK based IITNs, couple of IITNs have come together to form this CO2 capture. They have their own patented theory. And I cannot tell you more, but anthropogenic CO2, it is very difficult from the flue gases, it is expensive. But if you have CO2 in the gas stream, in the natural gas stream, it is easier to separate and less expensive to separate. But if it is from anthropogenic, like from the flue gases of the chimneys of the power plants or from the refineries, it will be expensive. So these are all patented stuff and these are owned by Mitsubishi and a couple of IITNs have owned their own company in UK and it, they keep the technology with them. I, I don't know how about uh, the Indian oil refinery, how they're going to separate the CO2 for NGC. I, I cannot tell you at this moment. Dharti Patel's Umesh Mali, what is your view on big oil companies as their diversification into renewable energy? What will be even? It's always benefit. Whatever change, change is the change is the positive thing to happen in the oil companies. You know, renewables, of course, uh, solar will be coming in any moment in a big way in the industry. Wind, wind power is coming in the offshore industries, although we may have some problems. But if you see ONGC has created a wind power in Jaisalmer, uh, as well as in Zakhao in your Kutch. Why? Just to support their cause. So renewables will be coming in a in a measured way. It cannot come in a in a huge way immediately because it takes time, investment, and all planning and all. But it has to come. And uh, like the Oman solar you are. That's the definition. What is solar you are? In fact with the help of solar energy steam is generated and injected in Mukhaizna, if I am not mistaken, in Oman. So it has a big role to play in the oil industry. Any questions further? No, sir, uh, we don't have any questions. So uh, I would like to now invite the audience uh, for a rapid fire round where sir will uh, throw a question and you will get 20 seconds to answer the question. The first, the fastest finger first, that is the first one who answers the question in the chat box will get featured in the first issue of Petrol the Magazine. So, so should I ask the question now? Yes, sir. So how do you define API and specific gravity? It is uh, API is 141.5 divided by specific gravity and minus 131.5. The question is, question is, how come those numbers 141.5 and 131.5 has been generated?
sir, we have one answer uh, from Darshita that it is based on water density uh, as specific gravity of water is 10. That's not the thing. Actually, historically, it's hydro, mercury, and all. So, actually, that is the basis of one. Otherwise, I should have made 200 and 190. So, that will also give a number 10. Or maybe any, any difference of 10 will give that uh, water specific API 10. No? So, may not be. I, I think it's uh, okay. Let them see the Google and find out the answer, actually. And uh, second question is, and this is a very interesting relative permeability question. Uh, at a satu water saturation of 40%, if KRW is point zero point three, what will be KRO? Sir, so Job, I have good. Sir, actually, the live stream is 10 seconds later than uh, what they are speaking, so we have to wait. Okay, 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 okay. So, we have our first answer from uh, Vivian Shuvia that is 0 0.216. KRO. I am asking KRO. If K at 40% water saturation, uh, the KRW is 0 0.3, what will be KRO? Okay, and ask Divya. Sir, so we have a second answer from Divya Shuvia. That is 0 0.16. Is that correct? Uh, sir, we have a couple of answers that say 0 0.75. No. Uh, in second? Uh, we have one answer from Alfina, uh, Alfisan Khan, uh, Bell uh, that is 0 0.6. Yeah, I, I should I agree with uh, 0 0.6. I don't know. It should be answer is less than 0 0.7. I, I don't know. He should have answered in this way as less than 0 0.7 so well like 0 0.6 if he understands this concept it's excellent the sum of krw and kro is never equal to one it will be less than one okay third question can i ask yes sir does grain size affect permeability of a reservoir We have answers from Darsh, Manav, and uh, Behli that uh, it doesn't depend, uh, it doesn't affect the, uh, grain size doesn't affect the permeability of the result. 
Uh, perfect. So what will affect the permeability? By 30, uh, I think uh, uh, while asking that question, you know, please remember huh? when is I asked when SW is 40 percent and KRO is 0 0.3 is a KRO is a dimensionless number 0 0.3. It's not 30 percent, but you write 0 0.3. So, OK, man, I just want to cl clarify you. All if Sankar Bahili has said 0 0.6, it should be less than 0 0.7. OK, I agree with it. Now, other question which is said, then what if grain size doesn't affect the permeability? What will affect the permeability of the grains? We have one answer from Moshumi saying fluoride. Permeability of a reservoir, how can it be changed by fluoride? Moshumi ji. Sir, Manav says uh, metric percentage is preventing of rock. Yeah, actually, you know, it should be a sorting of sands. A very well sorted sand in a sandstone, you know, with tortuosity one. Uh, will give you excellent permeability, maximum permeability. Matter cementation to but the sorting of the sands, you know, if they are very well sorted, then the permeability will be very high, very good. Uh, another question which I was going to ask was, uh, mm -hmm, what it was actually, in a uh, this is a very, very my favorite question. In fact, some of you know, I am confident some of the students who have been interacting with me knows this question. Uh, whether a, a gas reservoir with water drive or a depletion gas reservoir, which will give higher recovery factor. We have one answer from Dar saying depletion water drive. Okay, give him, give him. I, I don't want to hear the reason. I can talk to him separately to get the reason. Uh, one more question which I'd like to ask was to get recovery factor of an oil reservoir. Understand this question. Recovery factor of an oil reservoir is dependent on one, two, three. Which are those one, two, three factors? Recovery of an oil reservoir is dependent on one, two, three. Which are those three factors?
uh, sir, we have answers from Vishnu saying mobility contrast, viscosity, and SOR. Then uh, we have uh, answers from Berlin that is pressure, drive mechanism, and mobility ratio. Who says number one is point? Point first point is what? Tell me I, I, of respective uh, answers. Even first, somebody says mobility contrast. Battery please charge. Somebody says. Say, Vishnu says first, mobility uh, contrast, viscosity, mobility. and give him, give him, give him, give him, give him, because he has understood my talk here. That means he was present and understood my talk. Oil viscosity is the most important term which dictates recovery. Second is the permeability, vertical permeability. Third is the compartmentalization of the reservoir. And fourth, blah, blah, blah. You can go on adding. Energy of the reservoir and blah, 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 everything. See, permeability is also extremely important. First is the oil viscosity and then the permeability and drive mechanism and blah, blah. But the importance comes, you see the mobility contrast. If adverse mobility contrast, low recovery. Please, that's what I wanted each one of you to understand. I think that, that is good enough to answer the questions. But I have one question for answer for Mr. Anirudh. He has asked me a very big question, very, very big question and very complicated question. Uh, about low salinity water flooding into carbonate reservoirs. Anhydrides, the dissolution of anhydride increases as the temperature decreases. Now here, Mr. Burden, Professor Burden, we are looking at a temperature of 120 degrees centigrade. And quite consistent. You know, even water flood doesn't decrease the water flood at the reservoir temperature because geothermal gradient is very high and uh, the temperature is more or less maintained at one degree centigrade. So the dissolution of anhydride was limited to a great extent. Sulfate is a catalyst for the weightability alteration process and it is important. Now really, you know, the mechanism which is altering the weightability in the carbonate reservoirs. Still, there are several school of thoughts actually going on. You know, the sandstone reservoir, it's a different concept. Like in Ghawar, it's a different concept. In, in BP's Clear Ridge, it's a different concept. And in Mumbai High, carbonate offshore, high saline. We are trying to, at this moment, uh, work is going on in University of Calgary to really get into those specific changes in the ionic composition or the weightability, reasons behind the weightability. Maybe I'm not in a right position at this instant to answer your question, but I can say the dissolution of anhydride is limited to a great extent uh, and because there is not much of temperature uh, difference. That's what uh, Dr. Bardhan, I can answer your question. The Bianchu Vyas is Kushal does gas trying. No, no, actually, that's what I said. You know, oil recovery is dependent first primarily. Please, uh, this you appreciate as a petroleum engineer. You know, these are all secondary gas cap, drive mechanism. You know. If it's a very light oil reservoir, I'm repeatedly telling, giving you this concept. If mobility ratio is one, it's a nature's gift to you. It's a piston-like displacement. It's a nobody can give such a gift to us by other than this. When you inject water, the the fractional flow curve is almost flat. Water doesn't break through. So you see the beauty and all, all the factors which you are mentioning, water drive, gas cap drive, macroscopic, microscopic, all secondary, but primarily it is the viscosity. And please don't forget my with my dear colleagues. And second is the permeability. More than horizontal permeability, the vertical permeability, because vertical KV by KH, 
If KV by KH is very low, then vertical sweep of the contacted volume will be very low. If K vertical permeability is high, the contacted volume of the injected fluids will be high. So recovery factor will be higher. So did I, am I clear? Possibly I'm clear that it, now possibly I, I can't ask any more questions at this stage more. So any questions rather I can answer if anybody has any questions. Sir, we need to wait for the stream to uh, okay. go live. Okay, 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 okay. We have a question that has come from Himanshu Panchal saying, uh, mm -hmm. what is the reason behind API formula numbers? They want to know the answer to your question. <laughs> well, uh, see, I appreciate one thing. You asked the question, but please, young Jen, you know, Google is in your hand. Huh? So please go into Google and find why 141.5 and 131.5. Understand? Please do it yourself. I can give you the answer in a, in a few seconds, but I do not want to do that. I want you to be Atmanirvar, all of you. You know, it was a specific gravity scale developed by the American Institute, but in the historically, you know, if you see it is a hygrometry because a hygrometer, these numbers came actually. And that is why this is 141.5. You know, hydrometers in the US had been manufactured and distributed widely with a modulus of 141.5 instead of Baumann scale modulus of 140. The scale was so firmly established that by 1921, the remedy implemented by American Petroleum Institute was to create the API gravity scale, recognizing the scale that was actually being used. And that's what 141.5 came. Okay, but henceforth, Whenever you have doubt, ask why and try to find out in Google. It is in your hand. Okay. Thanks for asking this question. Please, Dati. Any more? Sir, we have a last one incoming from Behlim saying that any experience with Kalol and uh, Geleki field? I, is, is he working in uh, Kalol and Geleki? Behlim? What experience he wants to know? Can you ask him what experience he wants to know? Sure. Because I have been working from 1982 with the Soviets in Kalul field. Sir, until uh, the field reaches him, what we'll do is we'll answer one question from Divyanshu hmm. asking a word on well spacing for uh, various ER projects. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. That's a very interesting question. I never wanted to ask as a rapid fire, you know. Okay, okay, ask this question, Dharti, first of all, to answer the Vyangchu, I will ask a question. It's very important. Tell the boys and girls to define transmissibility, please. You write down what is transmissibility and get the answer and award the man or the girl who answers this question first and then I will answer Dave.
So Divyanshu says transmissibility is KH by mu. I, he's a master actually. You know, he, he's more than a petroleum engineer, this man, Div. And Div, if you say it is KH by mu, that means two terms are controlling it, you know. Leave aside H. That means permeability in the numerator and viscosity in the denominator. You see now how viscosity is playing a role. Well, consider at this moment, all reservoirs are very good permeability. So K is constant number and it's a good permeability. Now you imagine 10, 3, 4, 5 reservoirs with constant K and H, but varying denominator of viscosity from one centipoise, as I showed you in that fraction and flow, to 5,000 centipoise. Now, what is happening? Now, Div, you see, from two centipoise, K H by mu is more than in the case with K H by mu with 5,000, mu 5,000. So that means, you know, if, if we are far apart, if we are far apart, we won't be able to listen to each other. We won't be able to talk to each other. Now imagine in a very low transmissibility reservoirs where viscosity is very high and the wells are not able to talk to each other. What's the fun of developing? The wells have to talk to each other. So bring them closer. The drainage radius has to merge with each other. So the spacing is closer and closer in very low transmissibility reservoirs where permeabilities are high and viscosity very high. So in heavy oil and viscous reservoirs, you find a spacing of around uh, 300 meters starting with and coming down to 100 meters with further redevelopments. Now imagine a two centipoise reservoir. Oh, very high permeability to very mobile oil Transmissibility is higher than what it was in the heavy oil. Wells can talk apart, can listen to each other quite widely. So the distances become wide, 600 meters. Their drainage radius is more. The drainage area is more. But whereas in the heavy oil viscous case, because of low transmissibility, the drainage area was highly restricted. Imagine we two are talking, Dave and me, with a medium which is not conducive for the sound to travel. So we have to come closer. But if we are talking in a medium where we can hear easily, well, we can be miles apart, but still we can hear. So that is the concept of spacing with transmissibility. But this young gen, I... I, I tell you, this is the importance of viscosity. Well, now imagine a case with permeability is low. So very low permeability reservoirs, nature cannot allow the high viscous oil to enter during migration. So it has to be a very light oil. So now imagine very low permeability and low viscosity system. So transmissibility is low. So here also the wells has to come closer to talk to each other. Here spacing, I have developed a field in Iran where it was around uh, the spacing had to be worked on 100 meters, 200 meters, 300 meters, 400 meters. So we found 200 meters is the right option. So with depth also, it becomes a controlling factor. So one is transmissibility. Second is if it's a very deep reservoir, well, it will have a control on uh, spacing because after all, you are spending money to drill a well. So you cannot afford to have very close spacing in a very deep reservoir of 3000 meters. Well, it has to be wide apart because economics works in them. So it's an optimization of economics and technicality of transmissibility. Hope, Div, I have been able to answer your cause or your question. Yes, sir. He is completely satisfied. Uh, we have got a follow up from uh, uh, Bahlin saying that he likes he would like to know which IOR or UR method would be suitable uh, in case you have some experience in Kalol and Galeki fields. Why is he a service company or what, Bahlin? Uh, 
not mentioned yet. <laughs> Bellu is a student or is a working somewhere? Uh, no idea, sir. Uh, see, it's a big subject. You know, a color and galaki each layer is different. Well, uh, you know, like two roses are not the same. You know, the color, the name rose is the same, but the aroma. Color, it's a 12 layers reservoir. So each layer, one layer is tight, the other is very good, high permeability. Water flood has been very successful on Horizon 12. Uh, it has recovered 35 to 40 percent, whereas some reservoirs are very tight with 5 percent, 7 percent recovery. So it's a widely varying. So infilling as well as some UR like carbon dioxide can do miracles. But infilling is the answer. It's a symbiotic relationship between IOR and EOR. You cannot think of EOR solely. You have to couple it with infill drilling as well. So I always term this that IOR and EOR are symbiotic couple. Hope I've answered. Similar is for Galecki. Galecki TS, uh, Galecki T pumps and 5A is very tight. 5B is very tight. 5A is the most potential one. So there only all focus is there. Water flood is going on and proper water flood, it can give a good recovery. Hope I have answered the question, uh, Dharti. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, and he's clear that he's an employee. Uh, now, I think there are no more questions in the chat box. Mm -hmm. So we should conclude the session. And Thank you. In case in case we have any other doubts, uh, everybody can mail uh, mail us the doubts at petrovidyamagazine at the rate gmail.com and we'll get them clarified. Okay. So, uh, con moving on to the conclusion of the session, thanks to all the uh, audience that were present here. We also had uh, Professor Uttam Kumar Bhui, then we had uh, Dr. K uh, Prem, Kula, uh, Prem Kumar Chavla from ONGC. Also, we had Dinesh Chandra uh, Tiwari from ONGC. So, thanks to them uh, for joining us. For such a great session and uh, enhancing everybody's knowledge. So, Thank you. That's all, uh, Dharti, or? Yes, so that is all. And now I think we need to uh, end the stream. Okay, please.